Would it surprise you to know that over the last 24 hours, a single Bitcoin mining pool found over 30% of the blocks? Sounds concerning, but let's break this down and let's also use this as an opportunity to discuss and introduce Stratum V2, a new Bitcoin mining protocol. Let's jump in. Welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur at Bitcoin Club, an all-around raging capitalist, and I'm excited to cover Stratum V2 today, which has been really two years in the making in terms of its development. Uh, it is the latest and greatest Bitcoin mining protocol that promises to bring more decentralization and therefore censorship resistance to Bitcoin mining, which as we alluded to in the very first statement, is a very good thing. So we're gonna talk about the context of Foundry USA, what all the hype is about this 30% number, and then we're gonna go into an overview of Stratum V2, which is really cool stuff. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss a thing. For those returning to the channel, welcome back, my friends, as always. It is a pleasure to have you. For those new to the channel, I welcome you as well. If you like this type of content, I invite you to consider subscribing and join us in our growing merry gang in cyberspace. I cover all manner of Bitcoin related content, including a whole slew of tutorials on how to acquire Bitcoin, secure it, privacy best practices, running your own node, the Lightning Network, mining, and more. You want it, I cover it. That is how this works. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the meat for today. All right, so while many in the Bitcoin community are sort of parading around the view of the uh, Ethereum MEV watch, so I will put this link in the description down below, but you can basically see the number of blocks that are basically enforcing censorship from OFAC. I've covered this in a number of past videos. Uh, this stems all the way back to Tornado Cash. I'll throw a link up of that video if you're curious to check that out. But suffice it to say, there is a kind of growing concern about Ethereum's kind of credible neutrality and censorship resistance, especially now that it has switched over to proof of stake. And while that diagram, I will admit, is not sort of the end all be all, like there there is a big difference between uh, censorship in terms of packaging specific transactions or not packaging specific transactions versus refusing to build on prior blocks that had, you know, tainted transactions in them, right? Those are two very, very different things. And in Ethereum's case, it is really more so uh, the former versus the latter. But nonetheless, it's interesting and it makes you think, and it is timely regardless, because as we can see here over the last 24 hours, Foundry USA had over 30% of the blocks. And if you look at that on a last five week basis, they had over a quarter. Now, on the one hand, as I covered in the kind of proof of work versus proof of stake video that I did not too long ago, hash rate is typically much less sticky, right? you can basically within a few seconds switch your hash rate of your ASICs from pointing to mining pool A to pointing to another mining pool versus stake where in the case of Ethereum, you can't even, I mean, you can't even move your stake yet, but even when you do, you know, you have to imagine, especially with kind of custodians that people are staking through, there's gonna be a kind of exit queue, there's gonna be a kind of withdraw queue. Uh, and so that tends to be a lot more sticky, but it is still, Alarming, nonetheless, right? Boundary USA really has seen kind of stratospheric growth. And it's remarkable considering that as far as I'm aware, really kind of March 2021 is when they kind of opened their doors to a lot of the institutional mining businesses that use Foundry. And I think they basically get like zero pool fees. But in exchange, number one, you have to bring a lot of hash rate to the table. And then number two, they basically get integrated with Genesis Trading, all sorts of different kind of other ancillary services. Uh, that are connected to that because all of this is owned by Digital Currency Group. And so by late 2021, Foundry was already number two and now has been number one for a little bit of time. And a lot of this stems from the China crackdown and lockdown. A lot of that hash rate came out and came into the US. And so Foundry US is basically the kind of preeminent mining pool for big, big industrial kind of institutional grade mining operations. Now, to Foundry's credit, they certainly acknowledge this and are cognizant of the fact that, you know, their hash rate is increasing and that is ultimately not a good thing for decentralized mining, even if hash rate is 
not as sticky as steak, but to their credit, they have supported development of Stratum V2, which promises to help in a big way when it comes to some of these censorship concerns. Because what if the government went to Foundry's door tomorrow and said, hey, look, like you have to censor transactions that you know came from a Bitcoin mixer, or you have to censor transactions that came from a particular uh, address or set of addresses. That would be a big concern and it would certainly whittle away at the censorship resistance of Bitcoin. So with all that context, let's jump in and now talk about Stratum V2. And I wanna first start with a little quick history lesson of where mining has been and where it is going. All right, so going all the way back, you had Get Work, which is a protocol that, I mean, really, really simple. This was way back, you know, prior to even 2012, that would basically present the block header to be hashed, and that's it. Like the mining device doesn't even know the contents of the blocks. And so that gets upgraded to something called Get Block Template, which is now exposing the contents to the miners or, you know, mining devices. That's in 2012. And then in late 2012, you have Slush Pool, which is the oldest mining pool, as far as I'm aware, announced the proposal for Stratum V1, which used Get Block Template under the hood, but made some different improvements, particularly around messaging and data transfer that made it a better protocol overall for pooled mining, i.e. where I want to contribute hash rate to a broader pool so that as a miner, I get more stable payouts. Ultimately, Stratum is an open source communication protocol for miners, proxies, which can be intermediaries between miners and pools in certain cases, uh, and then the pools themselves, that allow these different parties to communicate effectively and contribute hash rate to the network. And contributed it was. I mean, hash rate really has gone pretty much straight up aside from the couple of blips, uh, most notably the China ban where hash rate plunged by about 50% and then it came roaring back and then some. But one big problem is that in this pooled mining setup, the individual mining devices don't actually have the ability to select their own transaction sets. That is fully delegated to the pool operator. So if the pool operator ultimately gets to choose the contents of blocks and choose the transaction sets, then that's a really low number of enforcement points for a government agency to go and, you know, kind of try and reprimand or apply restrictions or censorship in that way versus if the different entities within that mining pool can select their own transaction sets, then that dramatically increases the number of enforcement points and therefore increases the resiliency and censorship resistance of the protocol. So enter Stratum V2, which again has been in development for over two years. This is really cool because it's a community led open source effort, obviously supported by a wide range of players, but it's really, really cool to see. And the really big point for me and a lot of folks that are excited about this is that it allows for individual mining devices to select and kind of negotiate those transaction sets with the pool operator. But really Stratum V2 is, is broader than that. It's comprised of the main mining protocol and then three sub protocols that allow for different configurations of how this may work. For example, you could have a mining device that's still running Stratum V1 firmware that's able to communicate with a proxy that helps translate the messaging from V1 to V2 uh, and still reap some of the benefits. And so the big sub protocol is called the job negotiation protocol. This is where miners can now create their own block template, which includes the transaction set. And so you can see an example of what that might look like. You have you know mining devices running the Stratum V2 firmware, communicating through what are called standard channels with this Stratum V2 proxy. There's this job negotiation taking place through this extended channel with the mining pool. And of course, in any of these configurations, you have some connectivity to the Bitcoin daemon in terms of communicating with Bitcoin Core. So that's a big deal. That definitely goes to the heart of the sort of issue we were outlining earlier. There's other benefits as well. So the next sub protocol is called the template distribution protocol. And this is basically more efficient data transfer that replaces get block template and is what ultimately communicates with Bitcoin Core. And then you have the job distribution sub protocol, which can be used for enabling flexible different types of configurations that we were talking about. And there's even other improvements, like there's now by default encryption with the messaging, which hardens the system against kind of man in the middle attacks 
uh, perhaps by like a proxy that we were looking at in those diagrams. So really exciting to see in terms of the current status, the reference implementation is officially here as we can see in this post. Again, this is an independent community run, fully open source code base that is now available for pilot testing. So super exciting stuff. A more robust version will come out in November along with the job negotiation protocol. And then beyond that, you'll likely see, you know, different kind of awareness and campaigns, encourage mining operators and pool operators to support this new firmware for the system. So with all of that, let's go ahead and conclude today's video. All right, so we took a closer look at Stratum V2, which is by far the most significant upgrade to the Bitcoin mining protocol in quite some years. And it's awesome to see, particularly given that this was a community-driven thing, directly addresses some of the concerns we see with the likes of Foundry US becoming a really big mining pool and ultimately helps decentralize Bitcoin mining and improve its censorship resistance. But I'm curious to hear, what are your thoughts? I think there's a counter argument to all this that says, well, fine, but like even within Foundry, if you're talking about these massive industrial scale operators, sure, you've decentralized it a little bit if they can each propose their own block template and transaction set. But like if a government regulator were to tell Foundry to do something, wouldn't it logically be the case that all the component entities within Foundry would do the same thing if they're all these kind of big institutions. It's an interesting thought, and I don't know what the answer is to that, but I'm curious to hear what you think. Let me know your thoughts down below. If there are related topics you'd like to see future videos on, let me know. But I hope you found this valuable and insightful. If you did, you already know what to do. Give this video a like. Use the share feature underneath the video. It helps get this to more people and really does help the algorithm these days. And if you were so enamored by this content and you want to donate some sats to a pleb to continue making these types of videos, I will link my strike account and lightning address in the final screen that you will see momentarily. Never expected, always thoroughly appreciated. But with all that, we'll go ahead and leave this here. As a reminder, every sat counts. And until next time, I'll see you then.